Here to tell us all about the special project at the main library is Rebecca Stanwick. Rebecca, thanks for joining us this morning. Can you tell us what we can expect when we head to the main library to see this project? Yeah, so we have, um, this is the third year in a row that TLCPL has uh, partnered with the Bethany House of Toledo where the Silent Witness Project is housed and where it is upkept. Um, so when they come to the library, they will see 10 witnesses, all from the Toledo area. Uh, these silhouettes represent women who have been murdered due to domestic violence. Um, and they range from ages from the youngest that we have is 16 all the way up to, I think, um, like 46, 47 is our oldest witness that we have. So, Rebecca, you mentioned it uh, just a second ago. This is not the first year it's been held at the library. So why is it important for you guys uh, at the library to have this project each year? So for, for me, it's, it's especially important that we have it. That's why I advocate for having it every year um, so hard is that these women weren't just sad statistics. Like they're usually portrayed in true crime documentaries or um, in crime reports that usually focus mostly on the perpetrator of these crimes rather than the victim. And so for me, the Silent Witness Project, placing it in the library, which is often seen as a community connector, a community hub, shows us that these women were in fact members of our community, that they had names, that they had families that probably still live in the community, um, and that we need to remember them not just as victims of domestic violence, but as members of our community. And how does this project, I mean, we're highlighting local people who, you know, were victims who did die. So how does this project have an impact here in our community with domestic violence um, and the numbers that have been rising over the last year with the pandemic? Right, I think that um, there's a couple different ways it can impact the community. One is it raises awareness and it gets us talking about it. It gets us on the news, it gets us in the blade, it gets domestic violence vocalized. Um, it also shows maybe that there are some, you know, victims out there right now who need help. It shows that there are places that they can go, whether it's the Bethany House or the YWCA um, or even the library to get help to get out that they can. And it also raises awareness for family members who might be thinking that someone they love is going through domestic violence. It also gives them a way to kind of enter into the conversation about what is happening with this person and how they can help. Rebecca, uh, if anyone is watching, just tuning in, Rebecca from the library here today. Rebecca, one more question before we go. When people come to see this project on the Silent Witness Project, what do you want them to remember? First and foremost, I want them to remember the women that uh, were killed. This is only 10 of, I think, over 50 silent witnesses that the Bethany House has. And those are just their active silent witnesses. Um, they have more that they've retired through the years as we've gone on. Um, the silent Northwest Ohio silent witness has been going since 1990. And I think they have over like 150, 170 victims. So this is a large issue. And this small exhibit that we have is just part of it. So I'm really hoping that people will see this and realize the magnitude that this has for our community, that we're losing community members that could have um, provided their skills and their talents to us, but their lives were cut short. So I really hope we we just really talk about it and we see that this is a huge issue. Like, as you said, that has been riding, rising with the shadow pandemic of domestic violence over the last year. And it's global. It's not just the U.S. It is a global increase in violence against women. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us this morning, talking about the Silent Witness Project at the library, Rebecca. Thanks for having me.